get back It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a beach If you find the sand And right now I feel like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders and how they overcome big challenges in life and business, like the founders of P90X, Atari, and Quest Nutrition. Tom Bilyeu from Quest talks about how he helped build what is now valued at a billion dollar company and about the story when he was broke and he had to convince his father or future father-in-law that he would support his daughter. Uh, our sponsor today is Rise25.com, where entrepreneurs of six, seven, eight figure businesses come together live and in person every few months to solve their biggest business challenges and leave with lifelong friendships. Check out Rise25.com. It's run by myself and co founder John Corcoran, and it's application only. Today, I'm very excited. We have Brianna Borton, and uh, she's built three spas into an eight figure business encompassing a variety of wellness products, including nutritional supplements and the life planner called the Dream Book, which she'll talk about. She's co founder of The Dragon Tree. She's also author of The Well Life How to Use Structure, Sweetness, and Space to Create Balance, Happiness, and Peace. Brianna, thanks so much for joining me. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. You know, if I died tomorrow without going to college, I wouldn't be that sad. But if I died tomorrow without going to Europe, I would be really sad. So I got home. I saved all my money. I bought a ticket to Europe. I went and traveled for a year, Mm. lived in the Czech Republic, ran a hostel, got really into, like, the healing arts. And um, So you got into the healing arts there in Europe? Well, actually, it started in Montana because when I had my neck was broken, the yeah. only thing that helped the pain was massage. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, I've I really seen you started- obviously on video and things. Like you're walking around. Um, so, I mean, anyone who's listening to this, um, did you have? Was there like swelling on the spinal cord, or was there any effects of of that? Or how did the how did the break affect you? Yeah, so um, I have actually like the same fracture that Christopher Reeves had. Really? Um, Are you serious? Yeah, like oh my god. Yeah, almost identical, and just really lucky that my fracture slid sideways instead of sliding either to the front or to the back, which would have oh, been devastating. My god. And so you know, obviously, it was really important to. M- make sure that my neck was demobilized so that I couldn't move, so that it couldn't fracture or, or so it couldn't shift and move forward or right. backwards. So that was the main concern for the eight months that I was in my neck brace wow. while it was healing. That so, is crazy, um, Brianna. Wow. Yeah, I'm really, I'm just so lucky. I never had any lack of um, yeah. mobility and, you know, I really feel so blessed that it was, yeah. You know, it's just like a shift in life, but I was able to keep my health and my mobility and, you know, I really feel like it also, re- it really woke something up in me too. So That is um, an awakening, if anything. It, it, is, is, it yeah. is the awakening, yeah. So when do you, you go from this healing and then obviously getting into the healing arts and um, so at what point do you open your first spa? So from there, I moved. I said I like was living in Europe. Moved back to the United States because yeah. my sister was having a baby. I didn't want to miss that. Yeah. So um, came back here and moved to Portland with my boyfriend at the time, and um, worked a lot of odd jobs and decided to become a massage therapist for real. And yeah. went to school. I was a massage therapist in my private practice and at a spa for about a year and a half, actually. Yeah. No, not that long. And I was working at the spa that I met my husband at, yeah. and I loved it. I like loved the people. It was really good, but I always had all these ideas for how it needed, how it could be improved. Mm. Yeah, so like what? Like, oh, what we was, should have. Yeah. You know, like we did foot massages pretty much exclusively, and I was like, oh, we should offer neck packs for people while we give them foot massages because mm. then that would be like warm and relaxing and so nice and so easy to do. Um, or I'd be like, I think that we should offer like this treatment or I think we should change the schedule like this. I mean, I was pretty much all the requests you get (laughs) 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 that you're like, no, 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 no. (laughs) Yeah. So my boss at the time always just said, you know, if you think you can do it better, do it yourself. And 
I say that and it sounds like she was being so snarky, but I actually think she genuinely meant it. Like, she was, like, a really lovely person, yeah. and I think she was really like, I'm not going to do all this shit you want me to do, so just go do it yourself. Exactly. Get out of my um, hair. Yeah, so eventually they fired me, which I totally get now, because I would totally fire me. Um, <laughs> it was, like, a very challenging employee. Um, and I was like, you know what? I think I am going to start my own spa. So I was 22, and I was, like, so wow. sure of myself, going, even yeah. though I had, like, literally zero money. I'd never even had a credit card. Like, had, like, <laughs> no way of doing this. And I was like, I'm going to do it myself. So yeah. I uh, decided that I would. I wrote a business plan. I thought, oh, I'm going to write a business plan. People will just give me money which didn't happen um (laughs) so we definitely opened on a shoestring budget um my husband had some credit cards that he like some credit card credits that i used um i had a business partner uh, for a little while we borrowed money from her family Mm -hmm. and um yeah we opened on very little Mm money was the money for just the build out or what yeah, I mean, build out. I mean, opening a spa is expensive. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's there's so much you have to do. Um, and we did it incrementally there because we really couldn't do everything at the yeah. at the beginning because we didn't have the money. Yeah. So you know, we built out rooms, and you know, we had a sink for the foot baths and a sink to wash our hands, and we painted and we did like everything. I sewed yeah. all the curtains. I really? painted all the walls. Wow. I you know made all the foot bath carts with my husband by our, with our own hands i mean like everything we did everything ourselves because we really had no money um we didn't start with having any um amenities we didn't have showers or saunas or anything that we have now right. and we just opened knowing that we really cared and that we wanted right. to create an environment that people felt loved in and also wanted to offer really therapeutic treatments right and so we were really clear about our objective and yeah luckily then i bought my business partners half of her business a year into it because it was really not a great fit and um then we were able to make enough money that we were able to get a loan then we were able to add on the amenities and you know finally finish some of the rooms i mean there were rooms in our spa when we first opened that we were built but we couldn't we didn't have enough money to like get you know, decorations in and a table mm-hmm. in and all those things. So we just closed the doors. I get that. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. That door's just closed for now until right. we can figure it out. Um, so, yeah, it was definitely a ton of hard work, but it, yeah. you know, luckily I didn't have, I had a lot of ambition and a lot of energy, and I was only, by the time we opened, I was 23 and yeah. didn't have kids yet, and I could do that. Yeah. What worked and what didn't work? for getting because now you you have all this time energy money and you still need to get clients in the door you know yeah Yeah, it's really true um you know it's hard to say what works and doesn't work it you know because we have so many different aspects of our business and some things work for one aspect and some things work for another aspect like facebook ads kill it for us for selling our dream book facebook ads do not that well for us for getting people new clients into our spas. Right. So, you know, and, you know, we're always testing it, so eventually we will figure out a Facebook ads way of right. doing it. Um, but so far, you know, but what does really work for us for getting people in the door is to create really solid relationships with the people that already have come in. So yeah. we spend the majority of our money that we would normally spend on marketing on taking care of the people who have already mm-hmm. come in. So whether that's sending them gifts or sending them gift certificates mm-hmm. or, you know, making sure that we're reaching out to them and reminding mm-hmm. them how much they love us so that they share with mm-hmm. their friends. Yeah. Um, that actually, you know, it's kind of like, I kind of feel like it's like old school marketing, but it works so well yeah. because it's actually genuine relationships that you're building. And I think that all really good marketing is genuine relationship building. Yeah. How did you get those initial people in the door to, so you could build those relationships? Yeah, I mean, for us, we had some people in our private practices in massage already because hmm. I had been having my private practice for yeah. about a year and a half already. Yeah. So I had some people you already. Have a base and to work off of. Yeah. yeah. But really, when I say some people, I really mean like 10. Yeah. So there weren't a lot. It's a start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but those 10 people, you know, we just treated them so well and asked 
them yeah. so often to help yeah. us. What's something and that you that should do, like something you did to treat them like royalty, that they were just wild um, by? Well, we'd throw parties for them, and especially mm-hmm. in the beginning, there weren't very many people. So, and we would have it catered, and we would make sure that you know they had wine, and we'd get them free treatments, mm-hmm. and we'd ask them to bring in their friends, yeah. and we'd treat their friends super yeah, well. Smart, yeah. So that was um, one of the beginning things that we yeah. did. Um, and then, you know, we always quarterly at the beginning, we don't do this anymore, but we would sell, send them gift certificates for them, and a gift certificate for them to give to a friend with it being a gift from them. Right. So it looked just like a gift card with their name as the from, you know, it's like yeah. for like $50. So they could be the person getting giving the credit for giving the gift. Yeah. Well, for us, That's we're nice. getting a new client out of it. Right. Um, so a lot of things like that. We also, you know, did a lot of like checking in on them and making sure that their service was really great and following up and we always write thank yous to everyone who comes in yeah. to just say, you know, thank you for coming in. And now, you know, as we've grown, we have a lot more systems in place for, you know, we send them stretching videos, we send them meditations, we send them things to support their lifestyle after they come in mm-hmm. so that they remember, they feel like we are supporting them throughout the process so that they keep remembering us and coming back. Right. And when does the airport come into play? So we opened the airport spa um, in 2009, mm-hmm. and it's kind of an interesting, um, a li- we had a little bit of an interesting road to get there because in 2007, we um, opened our a cafe, which was right next door to the spa because mm. we were having our first daughter, um, Sabina, and I didn't want I didn't want to be away from her, right. but I needed to be at the spa. And you can't bring a baby into a spa. It's just like horrible idea. Not a great idea. So I was <laughs> yeah. like, a better idea. The anti relaxation. No, yeah, just... the anti relaxation crying baby. <laughs> Um, so I thought a better idea would be to open a cafe next door, obviously, and That's so obvious. Yeah. so that I can bring my you baby need to more work. work. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we opened the cafe two weeks before she was born, um, which is crazy. And wow. then I could bring her to work with me because I created an office in the back of the cafe where she could be and I could be with her and I could be right, I was right next door to the spot. They actually connected yeah. through a door. Um, they don't anymore because we have had, since then sold the cafe, yeah. which we did because we were approached by the airport asking us, I actually kind of like specifically like just asking us to like open a spa there. Um, but what really happened is that they wanted us to make a proposal right. to open a spa there, right. which we did and lots of other people did. Right. Um, and then found out what amazing bureaucratic tweet there can be in the world. Yeah. And I was like, this is so hard. Um, but you know, I'm determined yeah. and uh, it's like, I'm going to do it. So um, we won that contract, which was That's really amazing. amazing. Yeah. And in the process, sure decided it was really competitive. Just yeah, really competitive. Um, we decided to sell the cafe so that we could focus more on the spas um, and be more in line with yeah. what we really feel like our purpose is. Yeah. So um, we won the contract in 2008, and we opened like in the beginning of 2009. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's obvious advantages, right? There's huge amounts of traffic. What were the disadvantages of being in the in the airport? Um, the disadvantages are that you don't really have as much control as you normally would. Mm -hmm. You know, your hours are really set by other people. Mm -hmm. Your um, services, the prices are... Well, Portland Airport is different than a lot of airports, but they make sure that all of their businesses have street pricing, which means you can't charge more in the airport than you do anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And so, which I think is actually really wonderful. I'm so grateful they do that. But on the other hand, it's expensive to run a business in the airport. Oh, yeah. Because you have to pay for all the parking for all of your employees. You have to Mm -hmm. pay for their security badging. You have to pay for them to do background checks on all of them. You have to pay for, like, it goes on and on and on and on and on. And so it's much more expensive to run a business in the airport. And yet, like, you can't charge more at the Portland airport. Right. Which is great. And I, I think that the Portland airport and the people who run it are phenomenal humans doing really great work and i think that 
that has is like the only thing that got me through all the bureaucracy because it's so hard for me because I'm used to being like I'll just do whatever I want. Right. Um. Not so much there. Like I was like I really want to have um, um. You know those like pedal bikes that you can put people in and like pedal them around. Right. Um. Because yeah. they don't have um. They don't have like those car things at the Portland airport. Right. I was like let's have ped bikes. I didn't realize that. And they were yeah. like I was like and then I'll go pick people up at their gates and bring them to get massages. I um, love to see that. And they were. Yeah, they were like, no. I was like, ah, it's so hard. I have all these great ideas, and you always say no. Um, but, you know, it, it, so there are def- definitely disadvantages, but there are, you know, obviously, like, the traffic advantages. And um, I actually feel like I learned a lot from them about how to be organized around opening a place, too, because we had to have everything laid out beforehand. Mm, right. And that's just obviously not the way we did it the first time. We opened, like, one room at a time. So right. um, I, they gave me a great education in learning how to function in that reality. Yeah. So many, so much to talk about, you know, Brianna, in, in so little time. We only have a few minutes. I, I really wanted to get into what possessed you to open a third location, but we're not going to get to that. Um, <laughs> but I want to point people towards a couple websites and also just kind of leave you with whatever final words or lessons um, we should take away. Um, people can go to the dragon, the dragon tree.com. They can go to Brianna Borton, B R I A N A B O R T E N.com. Where else should we point people towards for the book? Obviously they can go on Amazon for the well life, any other places they can find the book or other things they should check out. Yeah, you can come to thewelllife.com mm. and you can okay. like see our cute little video of us um, and then read about the book. You can also download a free chapter there, cool. um, which is fun if you are interested. Yeah. Um, you can also order the book. If you order the book there, you get the free course with it, which is great. Nice. Um, it's a really great course and it's, um, you know, there's eight modules and we try to make it um, easy to do and reflect upon and short exercises for you to do in between the modules. Yeah. And um, yeah, you can also go to dreambook.vision if you're interested in the dream book. You can also find that on our Dragon Tree website. But yeah. um, it's uh, useful to just be able to, if you want to go straight there. So yeah, those are all the places you can find us. So we talked about a lot. What should we leave people with uh, so far from your journey? You know, I guess the main thing I would say is, like, from my journey is just to try to have as much perspective as you can Mm -hmm. because I think that so often we get bogged down with the daily kind of grind of things or feeling like if this deal doesn't go through, my life will end, or if this business doesn't succeed, things are going to be so bad. Um, And one of the things I've done my whole life it's just like an innate thing that I've always done is always to have my worst case scenario in my head and get really okay with it. Yeah. Cause my worst case scenario, you know, used to be, you know, I'd be a waitress. I'm like a great waitress actually. Okay. I'm like, I'd be a waitress. We'd live in a tiny apartment. I would still have my family and it would be okay. Right. Right. And now my worst case scenario keeps getting upgraded, which I feel really grateful for because people are like, okay, because I tell people this and they're like, actually, can you work for me? Can you run my business? Can you, you know, be my business partner? So now my worst case scenario is like much better um, than that. But at the same time, I think that so often we won't take risks because we're so afraid of losing what we've built. Mm -hmm, And mm -hmm. Yeah. I am a huge risk taker because I know that like the fundamental things that matter to me can't be taken away mm-hmm. by any of those risks. Like right. I wouldn't risk my family's life or my life, but I'm totally willing to risk lots in my business yeah. because the fundamental things that make me happy don't have anything to do with that. Right. And so I guess I would just say if you feel like you are adverse to taking risk or if you are constantly worried about things to just get some perspective around what it is that, you know, you're doing and also around what is the worst possible thing that could happen because it's often not as bad as we think. Yeah. I love that. Brianna, thank you so much. It's an absolute pleasure. I want to be the first one and and thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Have a wonderful All right, day. You too. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes.
lights, walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See lights like a beach if you find the sand, and right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand.